I know I'm late to the party on the glorious GMMK Pro. I didn't join in on the pre-order, but now that it's shipped and available in stock, no wait times, I thought, why not? I got the actually silver version, I picked up a black knob for accent, and also the polycarbonate plate for compatibility with aftermarket stabilizers. Upon receipt of the keyboard, I did a fully stock build with my lubed Glorious Pandas and the EPBTX Gok black on white keycap set which featured in my previous video. Unfortunately, I did not have the 82 switches required to fill the keyboard because I only ever buy 70 switches since that's all I ever needed for my KBD67 Lite and for my upcoming AQ68 Aurora. And so I had to mix another kind of switch in. I only put them on the function row and on the right navigation column so they won't affect the sound tests. Cool? Cool. Right off the bat, I was having problems. The Glorious Pandas were a very tight fit into the stock aluminum plate. You could even see some of the material of the switch shaving off as they were inserted. I filled out the rest with Duroc Palm Linears and those went in much more easily. Also, I could not get the damn knob off. I ended up unscrewing the case and lifting the top in order to remove the knob. Those goat stabs, out of the box, they are as bad as everybody says. They're just complete mush, aside from the space bar, which is very rattly. To go along with this board, I also ordered some C3 stabilizers. Since I heard that these had the best chance of fitting into the GMMK Pro's notoriously tight plates. But I wanted to see if I could salvage these goat stabs by retuning them. So I cleaned them up did the keyboard version of the Epsi mod on them, and then lubed them up as usual with Crytox 205 grade zero. And it turned out quite well, I think. I couldn't hear any rattle or ticking, but the spacebar sounded kind of bad. Very high-pitched and thin sounding. In that last sound test, I used a Geek Arc Accent Spacebar instead of the EPBT one since I thought it sounded a little bit better. For the next round of mods, I switched over to the polycarbonate plate, removed the two standoffs in the middle of the board, and swapped out the Glorious Pandas for the Duroc Palms. A warning first, make sure you're using the right screws for the polycarbonate plate. I just assumed that the screws for the aluminum plate were the same ones for the PC plate and that's just not true. The PC plate comes with its own black screws with pointed ends. And this is important because the PC plate doesn't have any threading for the screws. You'll have to make those yourself and with the pointy screws, it's much easier. I used the flat screws of the aluminum plate and just forced them in like an idiot. It actually did work, but when I realized my mistake, I swapped them out for the right screws. No harm done to the plate. With the PC plate and the Duroc Palms, the whole thing got quieter, but I felt like the bottom out was a little bit harsher than it is on the KBD67 Lite, despite both now having polycarbonate plates. The spacebar still sounded rather unpleasant, harsh, high-pitched, sort of metallic. I wasn't sure why. The next thing I tried is the configuration described by YouTube user Jad of all trades. You triple the gaskets on the bottom case, remove the bottom foam, and then screw in only the four corner case screws and only just tight enough for them to catch onto the threading. The 
This configuration is supposed to give the board some flex and maybe some bounce. And when I press on the keys hard enough, you can definitely see that flex. But honestly, during typing, I don't feel any flex or any bounce. Maybe I'm just too light a typist. I do definitely type pretty lightly. I was still not satisfied with the spacebar here, so I tried using the FC modded Duroc V2 stabs for my KBD67 Lite spacebar. This is when I realized that the unpleasant spacebar sound was just due to the long stems of the Glorious Pandas and the Duroc palms hitting their bottom housings. It's a loud bottom out and it's amplified on the spacebar. At this point, the GOAT stabilizer started developing some rattle. So I decided to finally use the C3 stabilizers. I was also going to Epsi mod these, but I found out that the C3 stab stems don't actually have that part at the bottom where the bottom foam would go. So I decided to try the Holy mod on this, but still using the KB Defense stabilizer foam I used on the Epsi mod. I previously saw a post in a local keyboard enthusiast group where people said that they did this. It didn't go well for me. I had a really hard time inserting the wire into the stem with the stab foam applied to it. You had to come at it at an angle. It seems that the C3 stabs have a tighter hole for the wires than the Duroc V2s. And when I used them, they felt super heavy. It's supposed to be normal to feel some resistance at first when holy modding, but this felt different. I tried to see if these would break in, but after a lot of pressing, I just gave up on them. They felt tactile, which is not what you want. So I removed the stab foam strips and just added the piece of foam at the top for a half Epsi mod. It worked fine for a time. It didn't feel heavy anymore, but after some time, I started hearing some ticking. Upon closer inspection, the stab foam had started sliding out of some of the stems. So I just removed them all and added more Crytox. After this, I started going kind of insane. I felt like I was still hearing some slight rattle or ping on the stabilized keys at high actuation speeds. And then later, I could distinctly hear a rattle on just the right side of the spacebar. I thought it was probably due to a wire imbalance, but after balancing it, it was still there. So I went back to the GOAT stabs and found that on the space bar, there was a noticeable muffling on just the right side. I had no idea what was going on. Why were both sets of stabilizers having issues on the same side? I wire balanced the GOAT stabs, but that didn't help. Then I went back to the C3 and I flipped the wire. Still the same issue on the right side. Then I swapped the left and the right stabilizers and still the same. What was going on? I eventually just went back to the Duroc V2 since I knew that these had no problems and lo and behold, they were just fine. The moral of the story here, kids, is to use Duroc V2s. But unfortunately, they don't fit in my aluminum plate, so I guess I'm stuck with the polycarb. So I noticed a strange thing as I was putting this board back together for what felt like the millionth time. The PCB plate assembly seemed to be slightly curved in the middle, raising the left and right sides enough that they weren't resting on the the layers of gaskets. I also noticed that the escape key was slightly too far to the right, dangerously close to hitting the aluminum case. And in fact, I think it was hitting the case, but the bottom right corner had already chipped off a tiny bit, enough that it was now clearing without hitting. When I tried using the aluminum plate, this issue disappeared. The left and right sides of the PCB rested on the gaskets as they should, and the escape key was centered in its hole. Upon googling, I found that this is a common issue with the GMMK Pro's polycarbonate plate. Apparently, they had some shrinkage due to heat and unfortunately my PCB seems to have developed some bowing of its own possibly due to prolonged use with the PC plate. I realized that it was this bowing that was causing the muffling on the right side with the goat stabs. I ended up cutting out some material around the stabilizer holes and on the rotary encoder hole and this minimized the issue with the escape key although it's still not fully centered. Since the entire plate is just a tiny bit too small, this seems to be the best that I can do. 
And this is the last modification I will be doing for this video. We're going to end with some sound tests with different switches. There are more modifications I'd like to try, but I think I'll reserve those for a part 2 video. If you'd like to see that, make sure you're subscribed. I've actually already got my hands on an FR4 plate designed by a fellow enthusiast. I'd also like to try holy modding some fresh Duroc V2s with actual fabric bandages, as well as the D65 gaskets from KBD fans in place of the triple gaskets. If there are other mods you're interested in, please feel free to sound off in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And if you'd like to support my journey to monetization, please give the video a like and stay until the end of the sound tests. Thank you so much for watching.